about Daz Studio, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna show. I'm gonna show you how to take uh, meshes from Daz Studio, which you can find uh, Daz Studio, which is a 3D program. It uh, shows 3D models and whatnot. You have to go check it out and see what it's all about. But there's tons and tons of different meshes on uh, Daz Studio. And I'm going to show you how to take these meshes from Daz Studio and put them in Skyrim. This will be one of the first of the conversion tutorial series. I'll also plan on showing you how to take meshes from Oblivion and Fallout I plan on showing you. So uh, for starters you'll want to go and get Daz 3D if you don't already have it. Uh, it's an entirely free program. Uh, apparently I don't know when but sometime in the history of this program's existence it did cost about $250. It's been free for a very long time. I can't even tell you how long it's been free but let's just say a very long time. Anyways, you're going to want to go ahead, download the program, and uh, you can also search the web after you get the program and probably find free meshes for probably best to try to get your hands on Victoria 4.2 or 4.0 and get free meshes uh, just by Googling and searching the web, or you can get some free meshes right here on their website. They do sell some of their mesh content, and I do not know if you'll be able to release anything from their website on the Skyrim Nexus, but for personal modding, this is a really cool thing. I actually have several of these meshes on my Skyrim uh, version uh, just for me, for my own personal use. I can't share them because they're licensed, but you can put them into your game. Well, anyways. What we're going to do is, uh, after you get the program, you're going to want to go ahead and open up Daz 3D. And as you can see, I already have Daz 3D started up, and I loaded up a model. I did that because I didn't want to show nudity in the video, um, full-on nudity. So I put uh, Victoria, this is Victoria 4.0, it's just a uh, standard Victoria. And I've put uh, boy shorts on her, and I put a sports bra on her. And I'm going to take this uh, these boy shorts and this sports bra, and I'm going to go ahead and put these into Skyrim. So after you get your model set up, you basically want to import, uh, you know, get a figure in here. You'll have to play around with Daz. I'm not going to teach you how to use Daz. I'm just going to show you how to put this stuff once you learn how to use Daz over into Skyrim. So get yourself a mesh set up, get your character in there, and then put something on your character that you want to put in Skyrim. I'm specifically going to be putting this undergarment here. I'll probably do the sports bra another time, but anyways. Uh, this undergarment here, these boy shorts, I'm going to put these into Skyrim. So to do that, I get all this set up, then I go ahead and I save file, and I'm going to go ahead and export it. Now, I already have me a folder called Exported Daz Content. I put that on my desktop, and I'm just going to call it A. I'm just, and you're going to save it as an Autodesk FBX, all right, and then just click Save. Uh, make sure you check the same boxes as me. You want your figures. You want your to collect the textures to a folder. You also want to allow degraded skinning and allow degraded scaling. And once you're done with uh, getting those settings, the same as what you see here, just go ahead and click Accept. It's fairly fast. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and minimize this. We're done in there. We're going to come into Autodesk 3ds Max. Now you'll see I have a uh, different setup than what you're used to. Uh, this is the setup that I usually use. I just didn't feel like reverting it back to its normal one for the video. I'll sh I could show you guys how to set stuff up. But anyways, back on topic. You click on uh, the icon. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to get our Skyrim skeleton in there and the body type that we want to put this armor on. So I'm going to go into... Uh, where I have my body type saved, which is female body underscore zero. It's the UMP model. Click open. Uh, make sure your settings are correct and go ahead and click import. Give it a second. All right, now here is my UMP body. And what you want to do, this is important, because when we import that FBX file that we just exported from Daz, uh, it's going to import the skeleton with that FBX. So we want to make sure we hide our skeleton so we can delete that skeleton. So we're going to freeze our UMP body, then we're going to drag with our left mouse button, click and select all the bones, then right click, <coughs> pardon me, and click hide selection. Now we have all the bones hidden, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import that FBX. So I'm going to go over here to import. I'm going to go to my exported DAS content. I'm going to select A, that's the thing that I just exported, and select open. Now 
you shouldn't have to change anything in here. Um, I'll just kind of scroll through. And so you can maybe pause the video at times and make sure all your settings are the same as mine. I don't believe I changed anything in here. So you probably won't have to change anything, but I'm just opening everything up so you guys can see exactly all my settings. All right, that's all my settings that I have. I'm just kind of scrolling through that so you can get the same ones if you need to. And then just click OK once you have those settings set up. Now, like I said, we're going to see a skeleton in here, and it's going to kind of freeze this screen up. You'll notice that your screen will freeze for a second as it's importing, because it's actually DAZ Studio content is very high polygon count meshes in general. Most of them are. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to get this undergarment mesh, flip it around, put it on the UMP body, and we got to get rid of all this other stuff, though, because we don't want anything. Well, the first thing we want to do is if we were to delete any of the bones associated with this undergarment, it would actually delete the undergarment that we want to keep. So first thing we want to do is we're going to remove this skin so it's not associated with anything else in the scene. So to do that, we'll just right-click it, convert it to an editable poly. And then once we've done that, we're just going to right-click it again, and we're going to just freeze it. All right. Now that it's frozen, the UMP body's frozen, the undergarment we want to keep is frozen, none of the bones for the UMP body are showing because we still have those hidden, we're going to select everything else in the scene and delete it. Now that that's done, we can right click and unfreeze all. I like to work with my UMP body still frozen, so I'm just going to refreeze it. And then I'm going to select the undergarment that I want to keep, and I'm going to get it set up and positioned around the body. Well, that's pretty simple to do. I just got to right click on it, rotate it first so I can get it facing the correct direction. That'll be on the Z axis, so I'll just type in 180 degrees. That's flipping it around. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale it. And you can do this in object mode. You don't have to select the element or anything, just straight up object mode. Rescale it. Now sometimes it'll scale up to the body and you just got to line it up, which is easier. This one isn't doing that. So I'll have to move it around and try to fit it. Now at this point, it's just a matter of fitting the mesh to the body. So, you know, I can move it around a little bit, maybe rescale it some to try to get a better fit. Uh, let me move it up a little bit. Hmm. And I'll probably, uh, yeah, if you've watched the first 16 videos, you should, uh, or done any of the other videos, you'll already know how to do exactly what I'm doing. So I'll probably just turn the page um, <laughs> after I have this all scaled up, because this will be very time consuming. Um, actually, and you can also work in this mode here. So go ahead and uh, fit yours to the body. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to my body, and then I'll continue with some more steps. So I'll turn the page. All right. Now I've already shaped mine to the body. I did a pretty good job. One thing I did want to quickly mention is before you export this, and I normally never do, you should be able to perhaps spread the legs out in DAZ 3D. You should be able to come in here and you know rotate these legs out. Now you'll want to make sure that they are identical when you do. Oh, that's not it. Um, right there, that should be it. You'd want to rotate the legs out just a little bit. It's something I didn't do, and you'll want to make sure that they're identical. So if you look, um, uh, looks like that's the side to side. So you take the side to side, kind of move that out, and say it's 7.92. I can hit Control C on that one, and then I just come to the other leg and do the same thing. Um, and uh, should be negative 7.92. Control V and there. And then that's how I would export it. That way the skeleton's kind of in an initial position, um, kind of in line with the UMP body. It just gives you a better uh, shape. You can move the skeleton before you actually should be able to. Uh, if you have a problem with that, just uh, let me know and I'll try to update the video or whatever to how to get it to do that. Or you can just move the bones in 3DS Max to make them match the skeleton. <laughs> Anyways, back on topic, uh, what I also another thing that I did is right here in this area, I selected a vertice using soft selection because this kind of area is the mesh likes to crumple up, you know, near the like the butt crack and all that. So I just select the vertice there with soft selection on, and then I just kind of come over here to relax and I spam that button a few times until it kind of, you know, uncrumples itself so it's a little more smooth.
but uh, that's all just you'll have to go in and play with the mesh and get it to shape around the body. As you can see, I did a pretty good job with this one. It's shaped really nicely around the body, so I'm all done shaping it. Now I gotta skin it and get it set up for export. So now that it's shaped, I'll just go ahead and right click on it and I'm gonna convert it to an editable mesh. And once I have a convertible mesh, I want to weld everything so whenever I need to paint the weights to get a better uh, fit on it, uh, the, it won't look real weird. Now this is something that I've been meaning to bring up is I now weld, I remember I told you guys to just weld in point 0.1 and somebody else mentioned point 0.01. I use point 0.001 for all my meshes. Anytime I ever weld, point 0.001 will prevent weight sliders from breaking. So if you've been using point 0.1 or point 0.01, just use point 0.001. That way if a vertice is too close to another one but they're not exactly overlapping, you don't mess up your topology by welding. This will keep your topology safe and keep your weight sliders from breaking from overlapping vertices. So just point zero zero one, spam that until you get no vertices within threshold and as soon as I have that done I'll go ahead and set it up for skin. So I'm gonna throw a smooth modifier in here. Oops, not the spherify, that won't work. That'll just look weird. Smooth. <laughs> throw a two on it and we're gonna skin wrap it. I'm going to unfreeze all so I can skin wrap to my UMP body. Uh, come over here. I want to set it up for face deformation, weight all points. Um, yeah, and go ahead and add the UMP body. Give it a second for this thing here to get through its little process. That's good. Convert that to skin. I'm going to set this to select so I don't actually move some. And then I'll go ahead and right click and delete that. Now it's good. Um, for the BS Dismember, uh, for now, you're probably going to want to go ahead and set yours up to, you know, you'll throw your BS Dismember, Skyrim, main torso, mouse over the thing. Uh, soon I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up these armors to where you don't have to export the body mesh with them, which is uh, in a very soon upcoming video. As soon as I'm done with the conversion videos, I'm going to show you guys how to do that, uh, how to export individual armor set pieces for the unassigned slots so you don't have to export a body with your armor increasing the amount of poly count that you can use per the armors uh, and not have to worry about the poly count of the body um, so for me what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know I would you would just put your BS dismember Skyrim main torso and do that whole rigmarole that you already know how to do I'm going to actually do something a little different I'm gonna go ahead and hide that selection I'm gonna unhide all uh, hide my body here and I'm gonna import one of my other BS dismembers so if you're wondering what I'm doing that's what I'm doing I'm not gonna export mine with the body because I don't do that anymore and I'm gonna steal the BS dismember and copy that delete it and throw my uh, BS dismember on there Mouse over everything, deselect, deselect. All right, that's ready. I could actually export right now and I'd just be fine. But, oh yeah, one step. Before you would export, this is very important. You gotta hit uh, M for material. Let's bring this up. You do not want to export it as a NIF file with this texture on here. It will crash 3DS more often than it won't. So you want to remove that. Uh, so just, you left click on this default circle. You push M on your keyboard, bring up your material error material editor. Left click uh, on this and just drag over and drop it on your mesh. You want to completely remove that texture. We're not ruining the texture. We're going to put it back on there after we turn it into a DDS, but if you export it with that texture on there, it will try to export properties that NIF files do not support and it will crash your 3DS Max uh, oftentimes. Once you do that, you can hit X and I'm ready for export. <laughs> so, I'm going to go ahead and export this. Now, before I uh, move on, I'm going to go ahead and fix my skinning a little bit before I export. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the page because I'm going to go in here and do some weight painting, which has uh, anyone familiar with that, a whole lot of fun videos uh, on that already uh, done, so go watch those. So I'm going to go ahead and do my skinning.